Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Sunday the 8th of January 2023. In today's Mill News, we have uh, more match post-match comments from uh, yesterday's game. Uh, the 2-0 defeat at the Den in the FA Cup third round against Sheffield United. Well, this is actually from the opposition's point of view. So, Blades boss takes satisfaction in restricting Mill at the Den. Paul Heckingbottom was pleased with how his Sheffield United team nullified Mill wins they do at the Den. Daniel Jefferson and Jaden Bowe will score in the first half of the plays as they came out on top in an all championship FA Cup third round tie. We had some great chances as well, said Heckingbottom. A definite penalty that we didn't get. Jaden getting in behind. Uh, Bill's cleared off the line. We've had some real big moments as well in the second half. To limit Millwall to only one shot on target is an achievement in itself. Because regardless of how well they're playing, you only have to look back over their games and their style of play. It generates opportunities or attempts on goal. We were very good from the first moment to the last. And with, with and without the ball, the six changes were right to keep it fresh. One or two I would have done anyway. With the personal changes, it allowed us to go back into a shape that served us really well in the past, with three attacking players instead of the two. That helped us. Mill had set up for how we normally play. Had we made the change and we had a couple of days to work on it, it allowed us to come on top and perform well with the ball. The message was just to be in the hat for the next round, and we've done that. Um, so... Good for them. I mean, they're in the next round. They got Wrexham, I believe, um, away or home. I don't know. Um, yeah, they're in the next round. And here's the thing: they could probably can afford to have a little dabble in the FA Cup because they're a bit clear in the second place um, in the, in the Championship. So it's something that they can do not really what we can do we couldn't even name the nine full quota of nine substitutes our, our squad is thin enough as it is we've got injuries and now we're letting players go um and haven't brought any in so the thin squad is getting thinner so this uh probably gives me uh if we move on to the next story it gives us Mill the chance to focus on top six ambitions. Indeed, it does. The Southern News. Um, the Lions can fully focus on their league campaign after their two 0 defeat to Sheffield United on Saturday afternoon. Despite his frustrations surrounding Mill's FA Cup exit, Garrett Rowett agrees it will give his side the opportunity to focus purely on their promotion ambitions. The Lions crashed out of both domestic cup competitions in the first round, losing one 0 away to Cambridge United in the first round of the Carabao Cup back in. August and 2 0 at home to Sheffield United in the third round of the FA Cup yesterday afternoon. However, with the Lions currently in sixth place in the Championship, a place in the playoffs is a realistic aim after narrowly missing out in the last few seasons. Rowett understands the positives of being able to focus purely on the league campaign, too, adding that the club will look to strengthen the squad in the coming weeks of the transfer window. We wanted to go through, that's a fact. Otherwise, I would have, I would have made seven or eight changes, he said after Saturday. We wanted to go through, we didn't play well enough, and that's what happens sometimes. And now we have to put it behind us and focus on the league. It's a big 21 games left. Uh, like I said, we want to strengthen in January because we know we've got a couple of gaps in the squad uh, where we need some help, and we're, we're working very hard as a club to do that. Uh, that's not me saying to put any pressure on it at all because we're working hard to get the same things. We believe we'll strengthen. Uh, I think that'll be important because we're in a really good position. Today wasn't a good day for us, but we've got to make sure we kick on and move forward. Indeed, this is the thing now. Basically, we gave up on this tie to focus on the league. So now, let's do that. Let's make sure we get the rewards and the results from doing that. Otherwise, this would all have been in vain. And it would have been just a waste. So, You've got what you wanted, you can focus on the league, so let's do that, let's do well in that. Um, so this might be a double of that, because I've just seen, uh, this is LondonNewsOnline.com, uh, South African Presses on my website, it says, Big 21 games left, Mill so focused now on Championship Promotion Challenge. Um, 
yeah, it's basically the same thing. So I didn't check that before recording. So um, yeah, same thing on uh, again. Now moving on to this. This is from LondonFootballScene.co.uk. It's based. They've basically gone around all the London teams and, and uh, asked their contributors what do these clubs need in this transfer window. So this is from. Uh, by Ryan Loftus, so we all find themselves in an all too familiar position this month among the playoff places and once again aiming to push on and solidify placing the top six. However, despite an exciting summer headline by the arrival of marquee signing Zion Fleming, so far this season the lines have huffed and puffed through ups and downs while trying to find a winning formula. January could offer the lines a chance to bolster the sport of one or two additions, yet given the summer spending, is more likely that there will need to be outgoings before any significant incomings. Well, I don't know when this was written, but we've already had two. A Fobie's gone. Uh, a Loffy's gone. They want to get rid of Aidan Muller. Um, so, George Evans might be going. It's, yeah, so the outgoings are outgoing. And the incomings need to be incoming. Uh, therefore, a significant loan signing or two could bring a new dimension to the team. But don't expect signings for the sake of it, which means Garrett Rout will be relying on his current squad to show improvement to earn Millwall a playoff place. Uh, indeed. Um, so I don't know if he knows anything or if he's just speculating now, but yeah, a loan signing, a good loan signing. Um, do you remember back in the day we had a loan signing? Dion Dublin. Steve Claridge. That basically last time when we, I think that was the last time we were trying to get um, playoffs in this league. I think we did the Birmingham game, that Stern John injury time game, that one. That I'm pretty sure that was when Dion Dublin was on loan and he did what he needed to do, which he could do because he's a very skilled player um, and, he, and he's a very uh, professional football player. Um, so yeah, that kind of thing, but are those players around anymore? Super duper multi millionaires. Um, anyone who's got any kind of skill at that level, would they want to drop down and they're back in like I still can't believe that like Dennis Wise did that. Um who else is there? I don't know. You you've recently kind of had what Wayne Rooney do it. They do it as managers. He went to Derby. So, um, who are who are these players that can do that? Will they do? That? I don't know. Um, they seem to be a seem to be a thing that isn't around anymore. These old salty pros from the Premier League, from the top top division, are still really really very good, but they're just a bit not as good as they need to be to compete in the Premier League. Um, they don't seem to be around anymore, and. The ones that are, what are the chances that they want to come and play for Millwall? It's yeah, in the, the only like benefit that we have is that we're based in London, so there might be a few. But then you like that's the thing. When you look and see and get these players like Chelsea, their teams full of foreigners now. Arsenal teams full of fl- full of foreigners. Um, why would they want to come on out on loan to Millwall, finish their career, or come down to Millwall? Um, uh, I don't know. It's not. It's not something you see happening now. It seems to be happening. So, and another thing, another point. If we are looking for loan signings, now I've mentioned in a previous video about a player called Cyril, Cyril, Ngonge, right? Uh, Cyril, C Y R I L. Ngonge, N-G-O-N-G-E. He's a Belgian, playing for FC Groningen. Well, he was. Um, just before the winter break, he had a bit of an issue in training, and the director of football basically told him to F off, and they want him out of the club. He's a very good player, um, but they want to cash in. They want He's under contract. They want him to go. So if we're trying to get the, that type of player on loan, because there's that club just wants him gone. We will be waiting until the end 
of the January transfer window. We'll be waiting for the last hour of the last day. Because they want to sell. They want to cash in. They want to get ching ching. They want to get their money. Right? But the second option, the less desirable option, is just to get rid of him now, on loan, anywhere. Bye bye. So what? They are not going to take the second option until it's very late in the day. Now we got a bit of luck because we had the Burnley game postponed. Um, because I don't know they haven't announced it yet, but it, it's I don't know why they haven't been telling anyone because the tickets are not on sale. But yeah, the Burnley game is going to be postponed because they're playing in the FA Cup fourth round uh, away at Ipswich Town on that weekend. So. That only gives us two games to play until the end of the January transfer window. So if it, we can wait until the last day of the transfer window. Because we've only got two games. Middles of away and Cardiff away. Both kind of hard games. Cardiff not really that very good. But playing them away is not going to be the easiest. Um, now, Middlesbrough. Playing them away. Apparently... Their striker, Juba Agricom, getting a bit of attention, might be being uh, sold. Obviously, it's a bit uh, early in the transfer window that to be happening, but if that did happen in the next week, that would be very good for us. Um, but yeah, so if we are trying to get a loan player because it's cheaper and uh, it's just got, they're just trying to put a cherry on top, they're not trying to. Rebuild the whole team. They've, they've got Zion Fleming. They've got Billy Mitchell. We've got Sean Hutchinson. They're just trying to put the cherry on top. Um, so they're trying to loan a cherry, and uh, we might have to wait until the last day of the season for that to happen. Look, if it's a great signing, I'll, I'll wait until the last day of the season. Uh, last day of the transfer window. I don't. It's, it's not a problem for me. Um, Cyril Ngongue. I mean. He's a decent, he looks like a decent player. Um, some issues in, in terms of off the field, off the field stuff, but um, but he's a cherry on top, and he if he can play football, um, yeah, why not? But we'll wait and see. We'll wait. We will wait and see. Now, um, in terms of players going out, got this. Now I've left this to last because I don't think there's much in it. But this is from the Daily Mail. Um, they're talking about Fulham. Fulham are trying to sign a right back from Arsenal, um, Cedric Soares. And basically, I don't know if they're trying to use other players' names to try and get that deal through, or if they, this is a genuine thing. But they've got a short list here of right backs, and they're saying Dick McMills, Danny McNamara is a potential option. Um, as a backup, if the Cedric Soares deal doesn't go through, um, so yeah, so Fulham, Premier League Fulham, trying to sign a right back from Arsenal. If that deal doesn't go through, then they're going to look to Norwich for Max Aarons, and then they're going to look to Mule for Danny McNamara. Um, seeing as Danny McNamara is the only right back we've got, um. Probably a bit stupid to sell him, but like I said, if they come in with stupid money, we've just seen we're losing 12 million a year. We might need to sell a player if an offer comes in. I mean, if what would be an offer that we we would kind of refuse? Probably five million. To be honest with you, that's literally half of our losses per year. Um, yeah, five million. I think the club would have to take that seriously, and then um, obviously Danny Danny would want that. He'll, he'll get a pay increase. He'll get uh, extra exposure. Uh, I don't think he'll probably go jump right in as first choice, but he'll be in the squad and he'll be there and thereabouts. And that'll give him a chance to um, get in the Irish squad, which he desperately wants to do. So yeah, Danny McMahon to Fulham. Um, but like I said, he's on the list. They have a first choice uh, target. Then they have further people down the list. They've got uh, Norwich's Matt Aaron's, 
and also Luton's James Bree. Um, funnily enough, I don't think there is any mention of any kind of speed in the game. Um, yeah, I don't know. So we'll see. But I think five million and and above will get Danny Matarai definitely. Maybe even less than that to be honest with you, but um yeah, it's crazy stuff, isn't it? And we've seen it in the summer Danny McMahon was linked with um a move to QPR, so does he have family in West London or I don't know. But we shall see. We shall see. Um Yes, and on that note, thank you for watching and